There are so many things I absolutely love about Operation Christmas Child, but one of the greatest things I love is the fact that we spend such a great deal of time praying over every single box. When we receive them, before they're even sent out to the churches and to other partners, staff get, will gather every morning just to pray over each and every box, asking God both to bless those who pack them and then to use them according to His good purposes. Few countries have suffered the results of war quite like Vietnam. Some two million Vietnamese and U.S. soldiers died during the conflict. It left the country in ruins. More bombs were dropped on the north of Vietnam than all the bombs dropped during World War II on continental Europe. Samaritan's Purse began its work in Vietnam in the mid-90s when we built schools and developed programs for the blind. In the late 1990s, we were remarkably given permission to bring Operation Christmas Child shoebox gifts to orphans and school children. On one trip in 1998, we were very close to the Chinese border. The weather was freezing cold, even for us as Canadians. At one little village school for tribal children, not much larger than two or three classrooms, no insulation, no windows, we were greeted by about 100 kids. I remember feeling sorry for them. It was that cold and only a few actually had shoes. Most just had flip-flops. That year, Ruth Graham, wife of Billy Graham, asked us to distribute little white lambs, little like the beanie baby I've got, with all the gifts. There was something unique about these little lambs, though. When you squeezed them, they would play the tune, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Mrs. Graham loved that song. She loved the tune. She'd often hum it when she cooked or cleaned. I was handing the gift to a young boy, maybe 10 years old, and I brought out the lamb. I held it up to his ear and I squeezed it, and it began to play that very familiar tune. The little boy's eyes grew big like saucers, and he quickly glanced around to see if any of the authorities were watching. What he was about to do would be illegal. Seeing that none of the authorities were watching, he reached inside his tunic, and he pulled out a tiny cross, and he showed it to me. The little boy knew the tune, and he's showing me that he was a Christian. I was stunned. Although we knew that there are many Christians amongst the tribal groups in the North, no one had had much contact with them since the North really became communist in the late 50s. God never abandons His children, and He will remind them at just the right time that He is still with them. I was reminded of this truth that cold January morning by a little boy, a Christ follower, of God's faithfulness to that little boy and reminding him that he had not been forgotten and it is dearly loved by his heavenly Father.